Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this tutorial series, we are creating this currency converter using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In the previous video, we created the design using HTML and CSS. Now, in this video, we will add the functionality using JavaScript. So, let's get started. Right here is our design and the first thing we will do is we will populate these drop downs with different currencies. So if you go back to the original design here we can see that if we open this drop down we have all these currencies displayed over here. So let's go ahead and get these currencies and let's add them to our drop downs. Now here I have found this website called floatrates.com forward slash daily forward slash usd dot json. So you can just go ahead and enter the same URL and you'll find this JSON format for all these currencies over here. Now you can go ahead and get this data and add it to our drop down. So let's copy this URL from here and let's go back to our code and let's go to the main.js file and first of all let's create a function called init and in this function we will populate the drop downs with the currencies. So for that we need to use the fetch API to get the data from this uh, URL. So we will add all of that inside a try catch block. And uh, here in the cache, let's tap console.log error loading currency data. And here in the try, let's go ahead and uh, type await fetch. And here let's add the URL. So I just paste the URL over here. Now here we can see it has this error because uh, when we use await, we need to change the function into an async function. So let's change this into async. Now let's go ahead and store this result into a const called res. Now let's go ahead and get the data. So let's type const and I'll just call it data. And here we need to type await res.json. So this will get all the JSON data and store it inside the data. Right now let's go ahead and console.log the data and let's see what data we get. So I'll just go ahead and call the function over here. And let's go back to our website and uh, at least open the console. And uh, here we can see we have this object. And the object we have all these currencies displayed. So we are getting all these currencies from this URL. Now, what we need to do is uh, we need to loop through all these uh, data. So in the data, we have these uh, currency code. And in that, we have all this data. So we have the code we have the rate and we also have the name now for the drop down we need to get the code and the name so here we can see we have the code and the name inside the drop down so let's go ahead and extract the code and the name from this object so first of all we need to loop through all these currency codes so we have aed we have amd and so on so let's go ahead and add an if condition and let's type rest.ok. Okay. So if the result is OK, then we'll go ahead and uh, add a 4. And let's type const. And I'll just call it currency code in data. So we're going to loop through all the currency codes inside this data. And here we need to type const and I'll just name it currency info. So this will get all the currency info. And let's type data. And in square brackets, let's type currency code. And now, if you go ahead and remove this console log from here, and here, if you just type console.log currency info, now we can see that all the currency info are displayed over here. Now, from this, we need to get the code and the name. So, let's destructure them. So, let's type const, and we have code and name, and we'll get it from currency info. And now if you go ahead and console.log that over here, so I'll just type console.log code code. And uh, here let's type name name. So now we can see we have all the codes and the names. So now we need to add all of these to our drop down. So let's go back and let's remove these console logs from here. Now what we need to do is we need to reference the drop downs. So let's go back to the index.html file. And here we have the select and for the first one we have the ID of from. And for the second one let's set the ID to two. So let's reference these two select tags. So we have an ID of from and we have an ID of two. 
so here i just type const and let's just call it from currency and let's set it equal to document dot query selector converter container from and let's tap const to currency equals document dot query selector converter container to now in this select we need to have the options so we need to create this option tag and we need to add the value as the code and then we need to add the code over here and also the name so let's do that here let's type const and let's call it option one and let's set it equal to document dot create element and let's create an element called option and let's set the value so let's tap option one dot value and let's set it to the code that we get from currency info and uh, let's set the text content so let's tap option one dot text content and uh, let's set it equal to and here i'll just use backticks and let's tap dollar symbol curly braces for code and then we need to have a hyphen and then we need to type dollar symbol curly braces and here let's type name and now we need to clone this option one for the second drop down so let's tap const option two and let's set it equal to option one dot clone node and here let's type true so this will clone the option one and it will create another constant with the name of option two and now let's go ahead and type from currency dot append child and here let's type option one and then let's type to currency dot append child option two and now if you go back here we can see that we have the drop downs and we have all the code and the currency name displayed over here so we have the same for both these drop downs now the next thing we will do is by default we'll just set the second drop down to euro so for that let's go back and uh, here let's go outside this four and here let's tap two currency which is the second drop down dot value and let's set it equal to two currency dot options and i will select the second option which is euro so here we can see we have the second option now since arrays start with zero we need to type one for the second option and let's type dot value now if you go back here we can see we have us dollar for the first one and for the second drop down we have euros right now the next thing we need to do is we need to create the convert function so whenever we add any value over here it should convert to the specified currency over here so further we need to reference some of these elements so we need to reference this input field we need to get the value of this input field and we also need to get the values of these drop downs so first of all let's reference this input field so if you go back to the index.html file here we can see we have this input with a class of input amount so let's reference that here i'll just type const input amount equals document dot query selector converter container input amount and we also need to reference the result so for the result we have this division with the class of result so let's tap const result equals document dot query selector converter container result now for making the conversion we need to also reference the rates so here we have the rate these rates are relative to the usd so let's go back and uh, let's create an object so i'll just call it exchange rates and uh, here by default we'll set it to usd and uh, we will set the rate to one because these values are relative to usd and in this list we don't have the usd so if i just search for it we don't have it so all these currency rates are relative to the usd so here we have added usd to one now the next thing we will do is we'll just fill this object with all the other currencies and their rates so here we can see that we are getting the code and the name and we also get the rate so let's store the rate inside this exchange rates object so here let's type exchange rates currency code and let's set it equal to currency info dot rate so now let's go ahead and console.log it so i'll just tap console.log exchange rates 
Now if we go back and if I just open the console, here we have the object. I'll just remove the console log from here and let's add it outside the loop. So now here we can see we have this object and in that we have the currency and the rate. So we have all these values over here. Now we can go ahead and use these rates and we can convert the currencies. So let's go back and I'll just remove the console log. So let's go ahead and create a function called convert. And first of all, let's get the input value. So let's tap const input value equals and we have this input amount. So we need to get the value of this. So let's tap input amount dot value. And we need to store it as a float because we need to do some calculations. So let's tap parse float and let's add this inside the parenthesis. Right now we need to get the values of the from currency and the to currency. So let's tap const from currency and I'll just call it from currency value equals from currency, which is the drop down. We are referencing it over here from currency and to currency. So let's tap from currency dot value and I'll just convert it to lowercase so that we can compare it because from the JSON data, we are getting the currencies in lowercase. So if you go back here, we can see that we have these values in lowercase. Right, let's go back and uh, let's tap const to currency value equals to currency dot value dot to lowercase. Right now, let's write the code for the calculation and we will store the result inside a const called converted value. And let's set it equal to input value times exchange rates. And here we need to get two currency value. And we need to divide it by exchange rates from currency value. So this is the formula to convert the currencies. Right now, let's create another variable for the exact result text. So let's tap const result value equals and let's add backticks and let's create a span and let's give it a class of result currency. And if we go back to the index.html file, here we can see that we have this span with a class of result currency. So we are doing the same thing over here. And uh, let's close the span over here. And inside this span, we need to add the two currency value because that is the currency that we are converting it into. So let's type dollar symbol curly braces to currency value. And then after the span, we need to add a space and let's tap dollar symbol curly braces. And here we need to add the converted value. So let's tap converted value. And we'll also limit the decimal places to two. So let's tap two fixed and let's tap two. And here we need to change this to from currency value, not from currency. So let's tap from currency value. Right now, let's go ahead and set the result text to this result value. So we have already referenced the result over here. So let's tap result dot inner HTML equals result value. And he will also add a condition. And if the value is invalid, then we'll just print invalid input. So here let's tap is nan. So if it is not a number and uh, here let's tap converted value. So if the converted value is not a number, then we'll just type invalid input or else we'll just display the result value. Right now we need to call this convert function when we change the drop down value or when we change the text of the input field. So for the input field, we have this input amount and for the drop downs, we have to currency and from currency. So let's add event listeners to all of them. So just tap to currency dot add event listener and uh, let's listen for the change event. And here we'll just tap convert. And let's tap from currency dot add event listener change convert. And lastly, we need to type input amount dot add event listener. And here we need to look for the input event. And let's tap convert. Right now, let's go back to our design and uh, here we have selected the USD and Euros. So I'll just type 100 over here. And now we can see that the converted value is displayed over here. Let's go back to the original design and let's see whether 
the value is correct. So we have 93.91. So this type 100. And here we have 93.91. So it is correct. Now let's go ahead and change this uh, currency. And let's select a different currency. So I'll just select this currency right here, Singapore dollar. And now the result is 136.52. Let's go back to our design. And let's change this to the same currency. And here we have 136.52. So the calculation is working correctly. Now let's go back and here, after setting the drop downs, here also we will call the convert function. So let's tap convert. And now if we go back, here we can see that when we load the page, we have the conversion displayed over here. So it is converting it from USD to Euros. And then we can go ahead and change this to whatever we want. Right now, the last thing we need to do is we need to add the functionality of this swap button. So when we click on this swap button, we need to bring this value to the top and the top value to the bottom. So this is how it works. So let's go back and let's reference that. So for the swap button, we have this division with the class of swap btn. So here let's type const swap btn equals document dot query selector converter container swap btn and let's go ahead and add an event listener to this so here let's type swap btn dot add event listener and let's listen for the click event and here let's create an arrow function and the first thing we need to do is we need to get the values of both the drop downs so let's tap const from currency value equals from currency dot value and const to currency value equals to currency dot value. So now both the currency values are stored inside these constants. Now let's go ahead and swap them. So let's tap from currency dot value equals to currency value and to currency dot value equals from currency value. And then we'll also call the convert function. And let's see whether it works. So here we have this swap button. Let's click on it. And we can see that the swap is working and we also have the conversion working. So that's basically how you can create this uh, currency converter using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Right, so that's basically it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.